Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over some HTML forms. Now, I've made videos on HTML forms in the past, but I want to include some of the newer HTML5 form elements and types in this particular video. So I've got a basic uh, page here set up. Let's see, doc type definition for HTML5, head section, title, meta, meta character encoding, character set, car set. I do already have some internal styles set up. I'm using a reset rule, sets all margins and paddings to zero. Um, for the body of the page, I'm using a sans serif font, and I've put in some padding on there. I'm going to be using quite a few form tags today. So I've got a uh, type selector for the form tag, where I'm giving it a background color, margin, border, and padding. Now this is one I haven't used in a video, um, I'm not sure if I've used it in a video before or not, but certainly haven't used it lately. This is a pseudo class, nth child selector. So I'm going to be using a lot of forms, and what this is going to do, this is going to color every other form. So basically my forms are going to have this color FFC, um, it's a light shade of yellow there, and but every odd numbered form is going to be colored this color right here. I think it's a light shade of purple. Okay, so in the child pseudo class selector. And of course, I'm going to be using a number of headline twos as well. The body of my page is relatively blank. I simply have a headline one. And if I go to my browser of choice, which today is Opera, then this is how my page looks. I'm going to be using Opera today because some of the form elements that I'm using, the HTML5 elements in particular, are quite new and they have spotty support in the big browsers. Uh, Chrome does quite a few of them, Firefox does a little bit of it, uh, Opera has very good support for all the newest form elements, so I want to demonstrate them here. I'll make sure I point out the really new ones too. It's up to you to decide if now is the best time to start using all the new HTML5 form elements or just it might be good just to know about them and then plan to use them maybe over the next 6 to 12 months as browsers get updated and get better support. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to jump over to my editor, which is Notepad++, and give myself a little bit of room to work here in the body section. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and create my first form, okay? So a form is created with a set of form tags. There's an opening form tag and a closing form tag, if I can spell it here. There we go. Now the opening form tag does contain some important information. There's some attributes you're going to use. Method equals post. There's method equals post and there's method equals get. And that is basically how the form data is sent to a server. Okay, We're going to be using method equals post for almost all forms. Action equals. Now I'm going to put in a little dummy action here. Okay, A little pound sign. In real life though, the action would, would contain the path or URL location to a server-side script. So when this form is submitted, the data of the form is going to go to some web address and that's going to contain a script. It very well may be a PHP script, okay? But since we're focusing simply on the forms or the HTML side of things, I'm just going to put in a little dummy pound sign right there, okay? So those are two basic um, actions. I'm sorry, attributes that you might use in the form tag. There's one other that I'm, I'm teaching a JavaScript class right now, and of course there's one we use in there a lot too, which is on submit. And we use this one whenever we want to call a JavaScript in order to do a little bit of form validation before it gets processed. Okay, So you might see uh, these inside of an opening form tag. I'm going to go and take on submit out, but I will leave these two in. So I'm going to do a number of form tags in this video and probably a part two. And you'll see these over and over again. Now within my form, I'm going to go ahead and create a heading two. And the first one I'm going to do here, this is going to be a um, a type text. In fact, I think I'll just call it text. Text field. Okay. Text fields are very, very popular. And a text field, and I want to do a couple variations of this so you can see some different ideas here. A uh, text field is going to be what it sounds like. It'll let the user type in some text. Super common. Most forms have text fields, and some forms are made up almost exclusively of text fields. Now, within this, I'm going to create a field set. Okay. So an opening and closing field set tag is made to contain fields that are related in some way. Okay. So let's say you had a group of radio buttons that were all related to, let's say, choosing shipping method. You might enclose those in a field set. 
for the most part, the field set element is an optional thing. And if you were to look at the source code of a bunch of professional forms out there, you might only see it in maybe 10, 20, 30% of them. But I'm going to go ahead and use them here just so you can see them being used. So field set. Uh, by the way, field set does come in handy when you're doing a lot of form styling with CSS. Not a topic for these videos, though. Now in here, I'm going to go ahead and create a label. Okay, So there's a label. And my label will be, I'll go ahead and put in something like uh, first name. So I've got an opening and closing label tag. And then I'm going to create an input. And this input is going to be type equals text. Okay. Um, for this text box that I'm going to create, I'm going to give it a name called F name. Let's see. And I'm also going to use placeholder. And I'll stop it right there. Let me zoom out just a bit so we can see this entire line. Okay. So let's see what I've got here. I've got a label called first name. This is going to be the text that describes what a person is, what this particular form element is all about. So the label is going to be seen on screen. The input is the actual text box that people are going to be able to enter their information into. So got the label and the input that goes with it. Now when you have a label independent of your input, there's something else you should put in here, and that's an ID and a for attribute. So here's how it works. If my label is separate from my input, I'm also going to add an ID attribute, ID F name, okay? And then for my label tag, I'm going to use a for attribute, for equals F name. The for attribute in the label corresponds to the ID attribute in the form element. Okay, So the for attribute goes along with the ID attribute, and they create a link with each other. Let's see what this really does on our browser. I'm going to go ahead and save this, jump over to Opera, and refresh. And now that I can see I've got this form, it's a text with a text field in it. So first name with a colon, that's my label. There's my text box. The placeholder attribute provides this little display text. Placeholder is a new HTML5 attribute. So if I click on my text box, the placeholder text goes away, and I can type in my information. Now, the for attribute and the ID attribute, let me go ahead and reset this. The for attribute and the ID attribute creates a link. So basically what that means is I can click on the label first name and the text box will get activated. So it improves usability when you use those labels. So let me show you this in a different way. So I'm going to jump back over here to my editor. There we go. And in addition to this particular text box, I'm going to create another type of text box. I'm going to do a, uh, I'll do a type password. So for this other one though, I'm going to do a label tag password and then I'm not going to do my closing label tag yet. I'll press my enter key and then I'll go ahead and create input type equals password name equals pwd. I'll do id equals pwd and um, sure I'll use another placeholder. There we go. So now I've got this other element, but after my input tag, I'm going to put in my closing label. Okay, so a slightly different technique here. This time, my label completely surrounds the input. Now, if you write it this way, you don't need to use the for attribute. Technically, you don't need to use the id attribute here either, um, but it does come in handy if you're going to follow up and do some JavaScript. Let's see how this looks. I'm going to go ahead and save jump back over to my browser, refresh. So they look very, very similar. I used a for attribute in the label of my first name box. So if I click on the first name label, that box is activated. And if I click on password, password is activated. So password is being activated because the label surrounds the input. And by the by the way, the password is a slight variation of the input type text. Basically, when you type in here, though, you won't see the characters. 
but this data is not encrypted. It's still sent as plain text. You would have to use another technique to encrypt the data that's being sent. So the password type, okay, simply doesn't display the characters entered into a regular text box, but otherwise it's pretty similar. Now I do have, let's see, if I jump back over out Opera here, I do see I've got this border around my field set. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that border for a moment so or while I'm working. So let me jump back over to my editor, styles, and I'll just take care of this real quick. Field set, border 0px. There we go, so now that border's gone, so we can kind of see how those are working. So those are a couple basic um, fields. Type text is very common, it's been around for a long time. Type password is relatively common, also been around a long time. So the only thing really particularly new in HTML5 is this placeholder attribute. And there's one more thing that we can put in here that's also new. Inside of one of your fields, you can put autofocus. So I could put the, the attribute okay or the keyword autofocus there's no equal sign no quotes just the word autofocus and if I save this go back to Opera and then refresh notice that my insertion point is already inside of my first name text box so when you use autofocus that particular field element is automatically gonna be that default okay so just keep that in mind I'm gonna go ahead and take it out for now though and I'm gonna start to create some more forms on my page